um, hello everybody so i hope you have uh, understood uh, from my previous lecture regarding uh, the basic of uh, redox reaction and uh, electrode potential so today our lecture will be on uh, the measurement of electrode potential so uh, so our previous lecture from my previous lecture you must have understood now what is the electrode and how a potential is developed across the electrode so we know very well that depending on the nature of the metal the electrode can be a anode or a cathode the anode is that electrode where oxidation occurs that means the metal undergoes a loss of electron whereas the cathode is a electrode where reduction occurs that means there will be a gain of electrons now the question is how do we measure the potential across the electrode now the process of oxidation or reduction that is taking place across the electrode that can never take place independently so that means an electrode it can only undergo oxidation or an electrode can only undergo reduction if they are both connected external then how do we measure the potential of a single electrode now since the oxidation or reduction cannot take place independently it is impossible to measure the potential of a single electrode so the potential of a single electrode it is found out by coupling the electrode with a reference electrode so that means if you want to find out the potential of an electrode so you have to connect that electrode to a reference electrode now this the potential of this reference electrode is arbitrarily fixed as zero so boys and girls what is the unit of a potential of an electrode it is voltage now the what are the important reference electrodes that are used for measuring the electrode potential so there that is a standard hydrogen electrode or shg and a standard calomel electrode or sce so what is a standard hydrogen electrode now this electrode let us see this diagram now here in this diagram we see that this is a platinum foil and this is connected to a platinum wire now this entire platinum foil and the platinum wire is kept in a inverted u tube and this foil as well as the wire is dipped into a dilute any dilute acid but its concentration should be maintained at 1 molar now hydrogen gas maintained at a atmospheric pressure of 1 atmosphere is passed through this inverted tube now the temperature of the entire setup should be maintained at 25 degree centigrade so this is the total arrangement of a shp or a standard hydrogen electrode why is the name given as standard because we are following the conditions of maintaining the acid concentration or the electrolyte concentration as 1 molar the pressure at 1 atmosphere and the temperature of 25 degrees centigrade so under these conditions the electrode the potential developed across this electrode is called as the standard hydrogen electrode now how do we represent or how do we write this shg electrode so this this is the electrolyte and on the left hand side we write the metal so the shg this is a reversible electrode so what do you mean by reversible electrode that means we see this reaction so that means this reaction can occur either in the forward direction or in the backward direction so if the reaction is occurring in the forward direction then the reduction is taking place across the shg and then the shg will be given as the cathode but if the backward reaction is taking place then the loss of electrons will take place and the electrode will behave as a anode 
That means the SAG can behave as an anode or a cathode depending on the nature of the electrode to which it is attached. Now what is the potential of SAG? So the standard potential of SAG is the zero at all temperatures. Now how do we measure the electrode potential of any electrode with the help of a SAG? So first of all we need to develop a cell. A cell, as we very well know, is the combination of an anode and a cathode and connected externally by, an, by a wire, by a conducting wire. So, the SHE, that means the standard hydrogen electrode, is connected to the electrode whose potential is to be measured. And both the electrodes are connected externally by a conducting wire. And the potential meter is also attached or is also arranged in between the SAG and the electrode in question. So the E0, that means the stand the EMF of the cell, which E0 stands for the EMF of the cell under standard conditions, is determined by a potential meter. Now we very well know that the standard potential of SAG is 0. So that means the standard potential of the electrode will be obviously equal to the EMF of the cell. So we see this reaction or the equation. So it is the EMF of the cell is equal to EMF of the cathode minus EMF of the anode or the electrode potential of the cathode minus the electrode potential of the anode will give the EMF of the cell. Now, if under such arrangement, if SAG is the anode, then the EMF of the cell will be equal to E0 or the electrode potential of the cathode minus 0. So, that means ultimately the EMF of the cell is equal to the electrode potential of the cathode. But if SAG is the cathode, then the EMF of the cell is equal to minus the electrode potential of the Here we can see that we need sometimes a secondary reference electrode and that is a saturated calomel electrode. Now why do we need a calomel electrode? Because the conditions under which the SAG is arranged or developed is very difficult to maintain. So that means the concentration of the electrolyte or the acid concentration of one molar or the pressure of the gas at one atmosphere. Now these conditions are very difficult to maintain. Also, if the gas, that means the hydrogen gas, if it contains some trace amount of impurities, the electrode gets poisoned. Hence, we require to use a saturated calomel electrode. Now what is a saturated calomel electrode? Let us come to this diagram. So we see that this is a glass tube and at the bottom of the tube is mercury. Now above this mercury is saturated, is solid mercury chloride. Now this is a platinum wire. Now this is, its main role of the platinum wire is to maintain electrical contact. Now this platinum wire is connected to the mercury. Now above the mercury chloride is the KCl. Now, the KCL, it is required to ensure the ionic contact with the solution outside and acts as a salt bridge. Now, the electrode potential of this total arrangement of this calomel electrode is plus 0.2422 volt. Now, how do we determine the standard electrode potential of silver? This is an example with the help of a test So, we first need to make an arrangement of a cell. The cell is represented here. This, this is the salt bridge. The double line indicates the salt bridge. And to the right hand side of the salt bridge is the cathode. And to the left hand side is the anode. Now this anode as we can see is the SCP or the standard calomel electrode. And it is connected to this silver electrode. That means the silver metal is dipped in silver chloride 
and the concentration of silver chloride maintains just one molar. So, this is the total representation of a any electrochemical cell. Now, the EMF of this cell is measured potentiometrically and at 25 degrees centigrade, it is found to be 0.56 volts. Now, how do we then determine the electrode potential of silver? So, we know this equation that means the EMF of the cell is equal to the electrode potential of the cathode minus the electrode potential of the anode. Now, this R stands for right, that means right of the salt bridge, that is the cathode, and L stands for the left, that means the left to the salt bridge, that is the anode. So, that means the EMF of the cell is the electrode potential of the cathode minus the electrode potential of the anode. So, we very well know the values. So, the EMF of the cell is 0.56 volts and the, EMF, the electrode potential of the SCE or the anode is 0.2422. So, we obviously can determine the electrode potential of silver or the cathode. So, it is, it is now calculated as 0 0.8022 volts. So, we hope we have understood this concept and uh, if you have any doubts, then please uh, put your comments or remarks or your doubts on the classwork in the Google Classroom. Thank you.